Here's Jordan. Did not have the shot. Welcome to Fast Break, a channel for anything and everything NBA related. There have been plenty of talented teams to win championships. There are even more that couldn't quite get it done. In today's video, we'll be going over the top five teams that didn't win a championship. Let's get into it. Starting with the number five team on this list, the 1992-93 Phoenix Suns. The team was led by MVP Charles Barkley, and in his first season in Phoenix, he elevated the franchise to a championship level. Despite missing their third and fourth leading scorers, Kevin Johnson and Richard Dumas, for a combined 67 games, the Suns were still able to rank first in offensive rating. Phoenix was clutch and experienced, winning a league-best 62 games in the regular season. This set up a first-round matchup with the post-Magic Lakers who they beat in five games, back when first-round matches were a best of five. Then they took care of David Robinson and the Spurs before taking on Seattle Supersonics in the conference finals. The Supersonics proved they could match the Suns' depth, with six players averaging over 10 points in the series. It came down to Game 7 where Barkley put up 44 points and 24 rebounds in a series clinching victory to send Phoenix to the finals. Unfortunately, the Bulls would be there to greet them, fresh off back-to-back -back championships and ready to go for that 3 P. Barkley would average 27, 13, and 5 in the series, but unfortunately for Phoenix, Jordan averaged a ridiculous 41 points per game in the series. The Suns were deep, athletic, could shoot, play fast, rebound, and defend. Overall, there were no real weaknesses with this team. Jordan was just that unstoppable. Even though Phoenix played as well as any other team that faced the Bulls in the 90s, it still wasn't enough. The dagger was John Pax's game winner in Game 6 to win it all and complete the 3 -peat. Phoenix wouldn't get close in any other season with Barkley, who was traded to the Rockets in 96. This Suns team was one of the most balanced and talented teams in the 90s, but they just weren't quite good enough to get over the hump that was the Chicago Bulls. The team we have at number 4 are the 2020-21 Brooklyn Nets. This was the first year of KD and Kyrie playing together. The Nets had traded for Durant the summer prior, but an Achilles injury sidelined him for the entire 2019-20 season. The Nets had a solid start to the year, but in January they made a move that would make them the favorites in Vegas. The Nets gave up Jared Allen, Torian Prince, Karis LeVert, three first round picks and four first round pick swaps for James Harden. This was the most talented big three ever, but unfortunately due to injuries and COVID-19 protocols, the Nets never got on the same page. In a short in 72 game season, Durant played 35 games, Harden played 36, and Kyrie played 54. Even though the Nets big three didn't get to play together much, they still finished the season 48 and 24, second in the Eastern Conference. Brooklyn took on Kyrie's former team, the Celtics, in round one, beating them in five games to set up a matchup between the Nets and the Milwaukee Bucks. Brooklyn won games one and two, but the Bucks responded by winning games three and four. The Nets won game five behind a 49-point triple-double by Durant, but the Bucks won game six facing elimination at home. Game 7 in Brooklyn was epic. KD put up another 48-point masterpiece, but with his foot just over the three-point line, his game-winning three ended up being a game tying two. This sent the game into overtime where Milwaukee would take over and win the series. The Nets struggled to respond after the heartbreaking end to their season. And come next season, Harden got traded to Philly for Ben Simmons, and that was it. The Brooklyn trio of KD, Kyrie, and Harden only played 16 games together out of a possible 113. This made the Brooklyn Big Three one of the biggest disappointments and what-ifs in NBA history. At the three spot, we have the 2003-2004 Lakers. After their three-peat, LA suffered a second round exit in 2003, so the Lakers looked to retool and make one last run at the championship. LA added Hall of Famers Carl Malone and Gary Payton, who were both chasing a ring late in their careers. While they were past their prime, they proved to be valuable pieces. The problem wasn't these veteran additions, the problem was Shaq and Kobe's feud became too toxic for anybody to manage. The Lakers started pretty solid, going 18-2 in their first 20 games. Fortunately, after the explosive start, Shaq, Kobe, and Malone ended up missing a combined 72 games due to injury. Peyton was the only one to stay healthy, but even he had issues running Phil Jackson's triangle offense. The Shaq and Kobe feud was at its worst when they were openly criticizing each other to the media while the Lakers were dealing with sexual assault allegations brought up against Kobe. Despite all of the turmoil and lack of cohesion, they still went 56-26 in the regular season to earn themselves a second seed in the West. They blew past the Rockets in round one before having to face the reigning champion Spurs. LA then went six games with San Antonio, 
and advanced to face KG and the Timberwolves, but LA proved the value of their depth, taking care of them 4-2. Unfortunately, this is where the wheels came off and the defensive-minded Pistons would get the better of the clearly flawed team. Malone suffered a knee injury in Game 3 that basically sent him into retirement, but Kobe and Shaq's personal issues were what really costed them the series and season. In the finals, Kobe averaged nearly six more shots per game than Shaq, shooting just 38% on pretty poor shot selection. On the other hand, Shaq averaged four more points per game on 63% shooting, yet clearly wasn't being fed the ball by Kobe. This was one of the most talented teams ever, but due to the clashing egos of their two stars, the Lakers just couldn't overcome their flaws against a gritty Detroit team that won in five games. Moving to number two, we have the 2010-2011 Miami Heat. This was the year of the decision, where LeBron took his talents to South Beach to team up with fellow All-Stars Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. All of a sudden, the Heat had three of the top five players from the 2003 draft, one of the most stacked drafts of all time. Immediately, the expectations were championship or bust, especially since Dwayne Wade had won a couple of years prior where Shaq and LeBron hadn't won one yet. The team started slow, going nine and eight, but they quickly bounced back winning 21 of their next 22 games. Miami went on to go 58-24 in the regular season, earning themselves a second seed in the East. This meant the Heat would play the 76ers in the first round, who they knocked out in five games before taking on their rival Boston Celtics in the semifinal. The Celtics didn't have an answer for the new look Heat, as Miami won the series in five games thanks to a dramatic come from behind victory in game five. They then took down MVP Derrick Rose and the Chicago Bulls in another five game series to advance to the NBA Finals where they would play Dirk Nowitzki and the Dallas Mavericks. This series was actually a rematch of the 2006 NBA Final, a series in which the Heat won four straight and won the title. Miami won Game 1, but the Mavericks answered with a comeback win in Game 2 to tie the series. Then the Heat won Game 3 on a game winner by Bosch, but in Game 4, the Mavs held LeBron to a career playoff low 8 points in an 86-83 win. After that game, the Mavericks never let up, winning the next two games in the series in six games. This series was easily LeBron's worst of his whole career. His 17 points per game in the finals was the biggest drop off from regular season to finals in league history. Down nine points from 26. The Heat ended up winning back-to-back -back titles after the gut-wrenching loss in 2011. So they redeemed themselves in the end. But as a single season team that didn't win at all, the Heatles are easily one of the best. And the best team to fall short of a championship is the 2015-2016 Golden State Warriors. Led by back-to-back -back MVP Steph Curry, the Warriors also looked to go back-to-back -back after winning the title the year prior. Golden State got off to a hot start, winning their first 24 games in a row. That was the first sign this would be a historic season. After the 24-game winning streak, the Warriors were the team to beat. But despite this target on their back, the Warriors went on to have the best regular season of all time, passing the 95-96 Bulls and finishing with a record of 73-9. and nine. Golden State had the best shooter of all time, Steph Curry, to pair with two other All-Stars and future Hall of Famers, Klay Thompson and Draymond Green. Though they were pretty flawless in the regular season, they certainly weren't perfect in the playoffs. In the first round, they went up against James Harden and the Rockets, taking care of them in five games. Then they faced Damian Lillard and the Trailblazers, who they beat in another five-game series to set up a Western Conference Finals against KD and the Thunder. This will prove to be their toughest series in the playoffs. The series started 1-1 before the Thunder won back-to-back -back games to go up three games to one. But the Warriors fought back and became just the 10th team in NBA history to overcome a 3-1 deficit. Thanks to a heroic Game 6 from Clay and a 36-point effort in Game 7 from Curry. This meant we were going to see a finals rematch between Steph's Warriors and LeBron's Cavaliers. The Warriors got off to a hot start in the finals winning three of the first four games with the series headed back to the Oracle. But with two heroic games from LeBron and the Cavs, the series ended up going to a sudden death game seven. Known as one of the best games in NBA history, the two teams went back and forth the entire game. But LeBron and the Cavs proved to be too much, beating the Warriors 93-89 in game seven. This game had the best defensive play of all time and one of the most clutch shots in finals history. So there was a surplus of memorable moments. The most being the fact that the Cavaliers came all the way back and took down a juggernaut in Golden State becoming the first team ever to overcome a 3-1 series deficit in the NBA Finals. And for the Warriors, the sting wouldn't last too long as they went on to win the next two finals with the help of Kevin Durant. If not for that, the 2015-16 Warriors would stand out a lot more than they do. This loss made Golden State the only team in NBA history to finish with the same number of regular season and postseason losses, 
which is just absurd. So even though they did redeem themselves, this team still sticks out as the best team that didn't win at all. Honorable mentions, 96-97 Jazz, 2001-2002 Kings, 1972-73 Celtics, 2017-18 Rockets, and 1994-95 Magic. Thanks for watching. Make sure to let us know who you think is the best team that didn't win at all down in the comments. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more NBA content.